the economy, trade, supply, supply. money, economic policy, monetary demand, monetary policy, conventional monetary policy, monetary policy. Does it really not ring a bell? Yet it is part of our everyday lives. Policy is all about listening, orchestrating, in short, organizing society. And if it's monetary policy, that means it concerns money, this medium that facilitates trade in our economy. And the economy, that's us. We are all economic players. That's right. When you make a useful or even a frivolous purchase, when you work, when you put money aside, you are an economic player. And all of us, we carry out billions of operations. Enough to make your head spin. And that's why, in any economic system, there are regulators. Yes, regulators. The central bank is one of these regulators. It conducts monetary policy. In the Euro area, it's the European Central Bank. In the United States, the Fed. In Japan, the Bank of Japan. In the United Kingdom, the Bank of England, etc, etc. One of its roles? To regulate money according to economic needs and constraints. Its mission? To stabilize prices, reduce unemployment, stimulate growth or adjust the exchange rate. Good! Now that introductions have been made, let's talk about conventional monetary policy. The type of monetary policy that was conducted before the crisis. Before it became necessary to devise other tools. Non-conventional ones, but that's another story. Since the 1980s, the most common objective of conventional monetary policy has been to stabilize prices. Stable prices are prices that rise, but not too much, nor too little, just under 2% a year on average, because if prices rise too much, the money loses value. With the same income, you will be able to buy fewer goods. And if prices fall, we will tend to put off buying. The economy will slow down, wages will decline, and repaying loans will become more difficult. To achieve price stability, the central bank keeps an eye, or two, on today's and tomorrow's economic activity. And to perform its mission, it has a powerful tool, the key rate. This is the interest rate at which the central bank lends money. It's the price of money, in a way. Yes, do you wish to take out a loan? At the central bank? No, the central bank extends loans, but not to us directly. Us, that is, households and businesses. It lends to commercial banks. It's the bank of banks. It often lends them money for a few days when they need liquidity following our requests for loans. The central bank influences economic activity through these loans and the key rate that it applies. The central bank steers it with caution and subtlety, sailing on the sometimes turbulent political seas, economic storms, risks of unemployment. It holds its course. But let's have a look at how it conducts its conventional monetary policy. The economy is overheating. It's running at full speed. Supply hardly meets demand. Risk of inflation. The central bank must raise its key rate. Borrowing then becomes more expensive for everyone, banks and their clients. These economic agents apply for fewer loans, investment declines, consumption is lower, the entire economy runs more slowly, but the risk of inflation recedes. At the same time, Foreign investors, attracted by this rising key rate that increases expected investment returns, buy this money on the currency market for investment purposes. The value of this money immediately increases. As a result, imported goods very rapidly become cheaper and consumers gradually turn their backs on domestic goods. But a tight rein is kept on prices. 
For the purpose of the explanation, this scene has been accelerated. In reality, all of these effects will take up to 18 months. If, however, economic activity subsides, the central bank must cut its key rate. There will certainly be more lending, the economy will be stronger, but there is a risk of prices soaring. That's how the central bank conducted its conventional monetary policy before the crisis. Until it had to devise other tools to face the new economic context, that of the financial crisis. Another context, another toolkit, another film.